Hello everyone, I'm Kristen Oaks-White. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Avery will join us a little bit later in the show. Well, the state's largest wildfire continues to burn in southwest Louisiana. A half dozen homes and 20 structures have been destroyed. For those with cattle and crops in the area, it's been a very serious situation. Twilight's Tammy Arinder talked with a rancher who said he had to move his cattle to safety. The southwest corner of the Bayou State is still ablaze. What's called the Tiger Island Fire has already scorched more than 30,000 acres in the Beauregard Parish area. The town of Maryville, about 1,500 residents, just about five miles from the Texas state line, evacuated. Uh, Thursday, it took a turn for the worse. The winds had picked up and really started to make it uh, just shift back towards Maryville. Jeff Meadows is a lifelong resident of Maryville. He and David Smith, the Beauregard Parish Farm Bureau president, scour the scorched earth looking at the damage and for any hot spots. Meadows says that it was a scary night when he was told the fire was headed to his house and cattle. The uh, sheriff had told me, said, uh, the uh, Actually, the fire is split off and it is headed your way towards your house. So at that time, we, I took action to try to move the cattle. I didn't know what to expect. You never know with a fire. His family, along with volunteers from the community, got those cows moved. I had called several friends. My wife had put on Facebook that I needed help, and there were several trailers uh, showed up. And there was actually some uh, people from Texas over here I never did catch their name, but they were trying to help people relocate animals, and I wish I'd have caught their names. So. Meadows and others were able to bring their livestock to the covered arena, which is owned by the parish. And no livestock have been reported lost due to the blaze, but there have been some who've succumbed to heat stress. We've already fought 511 fires so far this month. And so it is a massive effort. Everyone is working together. We have teams from 26 states, U.S. Forest Service, the military, you know, everyone bringing to bear. And our men and women are working extraordinarily hard, you know, and they, they, they're putting in 110 percent. In Maryville, Louisiana, I'm Tammy Orinder for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Now, the statewide burn ban is still in effect with no exceptions. The Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry is now offering up to $2,000 as a reward for any information about anyone violating the burn ban. While it's not as dramatic as wildfires, invasive species are also hurting Louisiana. These non-native plants and animals do billions of dollars of damage to the economy each year. This week, Twyla's Neil Malasson takes us to a workshop in Baton Rouge that's recruiting everyday people to fight this invasion. These woods look peaceful, but they conceal a deadly invader, one that could be coming to a lawn or farm field near you. We have uh, one of our largest players here, which is the Chinese privet or ligustrum. Um, its berries are very well spread by birds, and so they tend to sit in the trees and then drop berries, and it spreads it very rapidly. This is Amanda Takis, who works for the Baton Rouge Parks and Recreation Agency, or BRAC. She says even with full-time employees, they can't keep invasive species like this tallow tree out of the parks here. If people are starting to manage these species on their properties, then we've now created a network of healthy ecosystems opposed to these isolated islands of Breck Parks. Just because we are managing a species here, if you've got it on your property you know, just adjacent, it's kind of a losing battle. Invasive species are costing billions nationwide and are so widespread it's difficult for most people to tell what's native and what isn't. Taka says that's why they're putting on invasive plant workshops like this one to help stop their spread. Um, invasive species are probably one of the largest impacts to our native natural habitats in the parish. And so it's important that we are very aware of this problem and that we don't um, make it any worse than it already is. So um, the selling of invasive species and people planting them in their gardens and not managing within their homes only makes the problem worse everywhere else in our natural systems as well. John Huff, a volunteer who attended the workshop, says he's passionate about helping remove these plants, even if it means a little sweat. It's, it just allows you to be outside. You get to you know observe trees and hear birds and so forth. So it, it's a very calm and therapeutic thing to do. So I enjoy that. 
Complete elimination of invasives may not be possible, but stopping their spread is. For one, be careful what you buy for your lawn. Many species labeled as non-spreading still do. And two, take a look at the beauty of our native species and spread them as much as you like. We have a native alternative for just about any non-native species that you're wanting to put out in your yard as an ornamental. For instance, uh, yapon holly is a great alternative to um, any of the privets that you're typically going to find in the store. Containment and even eradication of invasive species is only going to become more important as time goes on, but it is possible. It's going to take both public and private investment and effort to make that happen, but invasives cost $120 billion in damage in the U.S. alone each year, so that investment will pay off. Reporting for this week in Louisiana Agriculture, I'm Neil Malasaw. Invasive species training is available in other parts of Louisiana and also online. We'll link you over to more resources on our website at twilatv.org. A hemisphere and an ocean separate Louisiana from Australia. However, students come here to learn about agriculture. Vermilion Parish hosted a group of students from Marcus Oldham College in Australia. The students came here as part of a trip to teach them about international agricultural issues. It was at Vermilion Gator Farm, just outside Abbeville, that students helped baby alligators hatch from their eggs. Now this is a vital step for alligators as it provides the farm with the source of skins and meat, but also provides alligators the farmers release into the wild to help with conservation. The visit really impressed these students. It's really interesting to see how they're trying to use the whole gator and for the purses and the meat and everything. So just that utilisation of the whole animal is really important. I think that's quite interesting. The gator farm is uh, an interesting thing because it started as conservation and I think that's really I think that's really interesting and now it's started into a bit more of a business obviously with the skins and the leather. The group also visited rice farms and sugarcane fields during their tour of Louisiana. Well, if you've noticed driving down the road or watching TV, it's an election season and one of the statewide races in Louisiana is for the Commissioner of Insurance and that race is now over. After Twyla's Avery Davidson interviewed one of the candidates, his opponent dropped out of the race. So while this may feel like old news now, we thought this conversation could help you get to know Louisiana's new insurance commissioner, Tim Temple. Tim, thank you so much for joining us here on Twyla. Good morning, glad to be here. Well, tell me a little bit about your background. I know that you've been in the insurance industry all your life for the most part. Yeah, Avery, yeah, and, and yeah, I, I like to say, you know, my adult career, if you will. Um, but I grew up in the uh, small town of DeRitter, north of Lake Charles. I'm sure a lot of your viewers are familiar with that in Beauregard Parish. Um, grew up in an insurance family uh, under an insurance roof, as you say. My father was uh, started off as an agent uh, back in the 70s and uh, grew his agency successfully. And he and his partner started a company called Amerisafe, which mm -hmm. writes workers' compensation. It's now, they write comp all over the country, publicly traded company, very successful. Um, and then my father was also chairman of LWCC, Louisiana Work Comp Corporation, started in the late 80s, uh, or I guess early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and he was chair for the first 23 years it was in business, and uh, or of his, its existence. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that just because that's my DNA, that's in my blood, insurance. And that's the, the roof that I grew up under, the eyes that I saw. Um, because my father was engaged in helping identify problems, creating solutions, and implementing those solutions. And that's kind of what I've brought through my insurance career and what I hope to bring to the citizens of Louisiana is uh, uh, hopefully the next commissioner of insurance. And Beauregard Parish, quite rural, so you saw some of the the insurance needs of folks who live in rural areas because it's a little different than folks in urban areas. It is, you know, in Beauregard Parish is, it has a heavy uh, uh, forestry, agriculture, uh, uh, forest agriculture product. We've got, obviously, you know, we've got some, some crops and we've got cattle over there as well, but I mean, trees, that's our big product, and we've got we've got a uh, uh, a mill uh, there. We've got a new plywood mill that just went up, and so we've got Canfor and then Package Corporation of America, uh, big you know users of, of wood products, and uh, and I understand you know that we talk about insurance and we tend to think about how it impacts us from a home you know expense there in our auto, but I think that part of the conversation we haven't had is how it impacts our economy. And whether it's, it's, it's your business, if you're in the business of, of cutting trees down or hauling them out or getting them to the mill, um, growing trees, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's all interconnected. And, you know, as, as your viewers know, agriculture is our biggest 
product in the state of Louisiana, and we need to pay attention to that. And as commissioner, I'm certainly going to to try and help bring some some solutions mm -hmm. and implement those. And going into your background a little bit more, tell me about your career in the in insurance industry. I understand you've worn a lot of hats over those 23 years. I have. You know, I've, and, and I'll, I don't really tell this story a lot. My very first job in insurance was immediately after graduating high school. Uh, I, my father and I got on a plane. We went to London. And I started working at Lloyd's of London as an 18-year-old, uh, did an internship there all summer. Uh, and so I, that's kind of when I started. Then went to, went to college, and after college, started off as an insurance agent. Uh, mm -hmm. Worked in an agency that the fam my family was, had in uh, Shreveport. And uh, did that for several years, uh, just cold calling, you know, mm -hmm. producing business, if you will. And uh, then later moved to, uh, a couple years later, moved to Dallas. Uh, and g just got more heavily involved. And, and over that 23-year period, I say 23, it's right about there. Um, let's just say two decades. <laughs> um, but over that period, I, you know, I was an insurance agent. I managed offshore captive. Um, I was a reinsurance broker. And we hear a lot about reinsurance right now and how the cost of that is, is, is part of what's driving up the, the, the cost for all of us on our homeowners and auto. Um, uh, I was part of a commercial trucking management team uh, for the biggest commercial trucking agency in the country. Uh, I've done disaster recovery. I managed uh, uh, catastrophe claims. Uh, let's see, what else have I done? I mean, it's, there's a lot <laughs> it's of what hats. haven't you done, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, there's a lot. But but uh, and, and I think it's important that the mm -hmm. next commissioner of insurance. I think they need to. Obviously, I think they need to be from the industry uh, because I am. Um, but they certainly need to understand the complexities of insurance because the solutions that we're going to have to bring are, are going to be complex. There is mm -hmm. no simple. You know, if you do a it equals B and everything's fine. It, it just, it doesn't work like that. And, and so we need to truly understand the complexities of it to help work with the legislature, mm -hmm. work with our new governor, work with our new attorney general, um, our new treasurer, all the other statewide offices changes uh, that are taking place as well as the legislative leadership to truly identify what the solution needs to be and implement that. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's competition. Mm -hmm. You know, it's making Louisiana a marketplace that insurance companies want to come to as well as making it an insurance a, a marketplace that companies that are already here can continue to thrive. Um, you know, I say it all the time, you want companies to make a profit because that's how they pay claims. Mm. If they aren't making money, it's very difficult to pay claims. So we need to nourish them, if you will, and, and, and make the changes regulatory and statutory so that insurance companies can come here and also the ones that are here thrive. Is that why you're running again? Because four years ago you ran as well, put in a, a very good showing in that first uh, attempt to, to run for commissioner of insurance. Is that, is that part of the reason why you're running this time? Yeah, you know, when I ran last time, uh, when, when I made the decision to run, the, the, the current commissioner had, had announced in years prior that he would not be seeking re-election. Um, and so I started, you know, down that path. And then he came and decided he was going to run again. And, I, you know, I was challenging a, at that time, of I think, a 15-year incumbent to the mm -hmm. office. Very difficult, uh, but I was determined to do it. And yeah, I think the final results were 47 53. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what was it? 549,132 votes. Um, <laughs> which, if you think about over half a million votes, was encouraging to me. Mm -hmm. You know, that that, that that many people believed in, in my idea, my mission, my vision. Um, and that helped definitely make me uh, make the decision to continue to, to try and seek that office. You touched on some of the things that. Uh, are issues in the insurance industry here in Louisiana. What do you see as the problems and what do you propose as possible solutions? Well, you know, one of them is that, that I think that we need to, we, all of us collectively as, as voters, but also in the, the, the folks that are in office, uh, the lawmakers, if you will, need to acknowledge that insurance companies don't have to do business here in the state of Louisiana. You know, other than Louisiana Work Comp Corporation, which I mentioned earlier, LWCC, and Louisiana Citizens, those two are required by law to offer policies uh, in Louisiana. Any company that you're doing business with other than those two decided to come here, including, including you know, Farm Bureau here. So they chose to be here. We need to acknowledge we're competing against states like Texas and Mississippi and Alabama and Florida and Colorado and all 49 other states for companies to want to come and write your policy and my policy. So we need to work and focus on regulation to make it more attractive, to make it more user friendly, mm -hmm. um, because we want companies to pick Louisiana. We also need to look at the laws that are on the books. You know, what laws make Louisiana an outlier? What, what laws on the books make it more difficult for companies to come in? And it's really 
the hurdles, barriers to entry, to come into the state, to operate in the state successfully. And, and that's what I'm going to bring to, to the office is that understanding and knowledge, acknowledge that we have to, we're competing. Mm -hmm. and, and we want companies to come here, but also, like I said, to, to, to come and stay and thrive. That's success. Competition, that's going to breed competition. Competition, is, at the end of the day, is what we all want because that's the only way we're ever going to get a lower insurance rate is someone coming in and wanting to offer something for a dollar less than the other company. And competition is what you're doing right now. He's competing for your vote uh, at home. So you are also a card-carrying member of the Louisiana Farm Bureau. I, I saw am, it in your I pocket am. there a little I, while I, ago. I have, I have my card right here, my <laughs> membership card. I've, I've been a member, I think, since 2018. I think it was 18 when I joined, mm -hmm. um, proudly. And, um, you know, look, this is a great company, great organization. The Federation is strong. The members are great people. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things we were talking uh, earlier today with someone about just traveling the state and, you know, how that, you know, is that tiring? You know, I mean, because some people say we're a small state, but let me tell you, when you're traveling mm -hmm. the roads, it's a big state. You know, and, and I, it gives me energy. It, I, I enjoy meeting the, the people of Louisiana. Um, we've got great people all over this state. And, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, a lot of times you kind of get caught up in all the negativity you hear on the media. Mm -hmm. But, but look, having traveled the state, you know, north, south, east, and west, there are a lot of good people in the state. And, it, and, and I'm excited. I'm proud of my state. And I hope to be part of the leadership to help steer us into calmer waters, if you will. Oh, thank you very much. He is Tim Temple running for Commissioner of Insurance. And Kristen, again, polls will be open at 6 o'clock in the morning on October 14th. After the break, we return to talking about a race that has a number of candidates seeking your vote. Avery visits with a candidate for Secretary of State up next. Stay with us. We continue to meet the candidates running for statewide election here in Louisiana. We're focusing again on the Secretary of State's race. Joining me now is Nancy Landry. She is the first Assistant Secretary of State for the state of Louisiana. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us here on Twyla. Thank you for having me, Avery. I really appreciate it. Well, first, let's get into your background a little bit. We mentioned that you're the first assistant at the Secretary of State's office right now under Kyle Ardwan, but you served some time in the legislature and grew up in Lafayette as well. I did. I did. I, um, I was actually born um, in Japan on a naval base. My dad was in the Navy, and uh, but I've lived in Louisiana since I was five years old. I grew up in Lafayette. I graduated from LSU and from LSU Law School. And I had an award-winning family law practice in Lafayette for some time before I decided to run for the legislature. And then I served three terms representing Lafayette as a state representative in the legislature before um, I termed out. And when I termed out, um, Secretary Ardwin appointed me as the first assistant secretary of state, which means I'm the second in command there. And I've done that for the past four years. What was it like uh, in the legislature? I mean, I know you represented some folks involved in agriculture there in District 31. I did. My, my district included not just Lafayette Parish, but also a large portion of Vermilion Parish at the time. And so I did represent some sugarcane farmers and rice farmers and soybean farmers from the area. And um, I learned a lot about agriculture and agricultural issues and worked hard to fight for um, the issues that they cared about while I was um, serving in the legislature. Now, if memory serves me correct, uh, you hold the position that Kyle Ardwin held at one point. He was the first assistant uh, That's right. at the Secretary of State's office. What made you decide that you should run for this position? Well, um, I want us to be number one in election integrity in the nation. And we're often at the top of bad lists and the bottom of good lists. But that's not the case with elections. We're actually, um, we have a lot to be proud of about elections in Louisiana. We do them well. And we've been ranked number six in the nation by the Heritage Foundation and number one in the South by the Electoral Integrity Project. And the legislative auditor gave us really high marks for our election integrity policies and procedures. So um, we can be proud of how we do elections, but I think we can do even better. And I want us to be number one in the nation, and I have a plan to get us there to number one. What is that plan? So the, the main priority I have is I want us to get a new voting system. We vote on really old machines that were manufactured in the 90s. And so we, we really need a new modern system. And I would like us to have a new voting system that has a paper backup to it. And that's best practices now. Most states have that. And the only reason we don't have it is because our machines are so old. 
So I'd like us to have a system that has the best of both worlds. It has um, the efficiency and accuracy of technology, but also the paper backup so we can verify those results and the voter can verify the accuracy of their vote. Because I don't trust anyone like I trust you to check the accuracy of your vote. Also, the Secretary of State's office is very involved in business. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts concerning small businesses and what the Secretary of State's office can do for them. That's right. I mean, most people think of elections when they think of the Secretary of State's office, but we also register all the businesses in the state. And since I've been at the Secretary of State's office, we've worked really hard to reduce the burdens of regulations on small businesses. We've implemented the Small Business Protection Act, so we have more transparency about burdensome regulations, more opportunity for the business owner to um, get word about those regulations before they're enacted. And we also moved forward this year with a portal on our website that would allow small business owners to weigh in on what uh, regulations are burdensome and to suggest alternatives to those regulations. So we've worked really hard to make um, our, our um, website a one-stop shop for small business owners. And I know that um, farmers are small businesses and they, um, they would appreciate those small things that we do to help ease the burden on regulations. So what other issues do you see there being facing Louisiana that the Secretary of State's office can tackle and what, what do you see as the solutions? So we also, another priority of mine is that I, I want to ban the pr um, use of private funds to conduct elections. We saw in this last election cycle some outside groups who came in and tried to um, use private funding to manipulate the results of the election. And, an election administrator should never accept private funding to conduct an election. And so that's something that I will pledge to work on to make sure that um, we don't have any private funding in elections. We have actually a constitutional amendment that will be on the ballot this fall. And we helped um, work, we worked with the legislature to try to get that passed and we hope that that um, passes this fall. Um, I also want to clean up our voter rolls. We have, um, you know, tools to clean it up now, and we do a good job, but uh, we, would, we would like some additional tools to use to um, clean them up even more. And we asked the legislature to do that and give us that authority this session. And three years in a row, they passed legislation to um, give us the tools that we needed to clean up the voter rolls even more. And three years in a row, that legislation was vetoed. So we're... We're, um, you know, going to keep trying, and we, um, I think as Secretary of State, I can work with the next legislature and with the new governor to make sure that that legislation passes and that we can have even cleaner and more accurate voter rolls, because who doesn't want that, you know? So why do you think uh, the voters of Louisiana should choose you over your, uh, your competitors? I'm the only candidate with the qualifications and experience to move this agency to the next level. And I want um, to be the next Secretary of State so I can make us number one in election integrity. I'm a licensed attorney and I, um, I'm a certified election registration administrator. So I have the qualifications and experience to hit the ground running for the 2024 presidential election. And the presidential preference primary is just two months after the new secretary takes office. So we really just can't afford to have somebody who needs on-the-job training. Well, I know you've been doing a great job there. Thank you so much. She Thank is Nan you, Avery. Nancy Landry. She is a candidate for Secretary of State and the first Assistant Secretary of State right now. Coming up after the break, we'll have a Twyla boost to make you smile. Stay with us. Well, we've talked a lot about the wrath of Mother Nature in today's show, but it would be unjust not to mention the good of mankind that has also been on display during these difficult times. Firefighters from around the state and even neighboring states have left their home stations and families to assist Southwest and Central Louisiana fire departments. So today's Twyla Boost goes out to all the frontline heroes battling the Louisiana wildfires around the clock.
That does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll show you more from the wildfires in southwest Louisiana. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twilighttv.org and be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find all of these stories and more on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know exactly when we put out new content. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.